Hello everyone, welcome to this tune-up guide. To do this nice and cheap, we went out and bought a Canadian Tire $40 with tax, $50, 3 8 1 4 inch set. And it comes with everything, including the spark plug socket, which is nice because it's got the little rubber bit in here, so that when you pop it onto your spark plug, you won't be damaging it and it holds a nice grip so it doesn't slip. Uh, you should always get some dielectric grease. Usually the wires will come with a small pack. I always buy my own. Actually, I had to buy a new one. And anti-seize compound to put on this part, the threaded part of your plug when it goes into the engine block. Especially if, per se, you have aluminum motor, you want to make sure you protect it between the different metals. Typically, you should stick to OEM parts. So I'm definitely doing that for the distributor cap the rotor but this time I'm gonna go with NGK wires and spark plug uh, simply because they're advertised as OEM equivalent or better now one time that I did use the NGK on this particular truck 4.3 liter v6 from GM within six months I had issues and the issues it felt like my camshaft precision was off and I was getting knocking pinging all the above and I just was wondering oh what the heck's going on and um, I just figured, well, you know, I, the vehicle shouldn't be that bad. So I took out all the NGK stuff and put back in the AC Delco Professionals, which is what I have in the truck right now. And, and it's been running peachy since then. I'm doing this upgrade, or not upgrade, this tune-up because it's needed. Because I'm going to show you in a bit, most likely, uh, distributor is no good. And the rotor is no good. And I figure I have about probably... Uh, 100,000, close to 100,000, if not 80,000 cams on the spark and wire. And it's still okay, but I'm getting hesitation around 80s, uh, 80 cam, or when I'm pushing really hard with a load. It's just not feeling like I have my full power, and that's why I'm just going to do it, because it's cheap. I'm buying the NGK, because it's half the cost of the AC Delco. I don't know how much you're going to get these where you are, but basically I got each of these plugs for just under $6.00. And that um, wire set is like $60, and that's Canadian, okay? So, maybe you're also watching this video, and that's why I'm going to put the information in the beginning about the wiring. Uh, so, nowadays, it's usually all labeled out. So, here's um, number one, two, three, four, and five, and six. And, of course, this goes to the ignition, the cap. Now, of course, this is going to differ from your actual vehicle. So on this vehicle, the uh, 4.3 liter V6, um, if you're looking this way, the furthest spark plug, actually, here's the easiest way. Right down the middle, driver side is all odd number, passenger side is all even number. So you have 1, 3, 5, and then furthest on the passenger side, you're going to have 2, 4, 6, 6 closest to you. And that's why it is like this. Oops. <laughs> so, basically, as you can see right here, 2, 4, 6, that's correct. On the other side, it is 1, 3, 5. So the 1 and 3 are swapped. Okay? Now, of course, the best way, if you're not sure about that, um, the neat thing about the NGK wires is they come labeled right here, as you see. It tells you which wire goes to which cylinder. And what you can do is, as you pull off your old wire, just match up the length. And then you got it, and you know which position it should go in. Okay. Madeline's going to sit back here and watch me get this done. Right, Madeline? Yeah? <laughs> and here's through the wheel well on the passenger side. And this through the driver's side. Alright, folks. So, here's the old rotor. As you can see, some good arcing was going on to melt that plastic there. And the metal is definitely changed. <laughs> I'm going to use the word change because I've lost all my scientific words. Here's the new one. It'll definitely provide a lot better contact. Here is the new distributor cap. Okay. All shiny, clean rods and metal. Here's the old one. And you can see, you have all the nice corrosion. That's the white stuff. Corrosion doesn't have to look like orange rust. 
Now, the interesting thing here is, I could probably just clean this up, and it'll work. It'll probably work a lot better. This guy, uh, I think I could do the same thing, and just kind of sandpaper it off a little bit. But you know what? It's not worth it. Doghouse is off ready. This was, both of these together, I think was $50. Back in the days, these used to be brass, no longer brass, and that's why if you feel like you've been changing your distributor and cap, or that you need to every two years, uh, I'm going to tell you that's pretty much the same for me. Under heavy, heavy use, uh, when I say heavy use, let's think, uh, you know, maybe 30,000 cans, but a lot of that is pushing hard on the motor. <laughs> I won't explain what hard means. You can uh, use your creative imagination. I do have to change it every two years. Uh, this distributing cap, what you see here, is actually over three years, but the vehicle has probably only gone maybe about 20 to 30,000 cams. Actually, let me think about that clear. No, actually it's gone only 20,000 cams in three years, and the main reason why is because we got two other vehicles, and um, I was doing a lot less fishing and hiking and, and towing and all that. So that's about the lifespan. Um, I'm actually kind of thinking of not changing my sparks and wire <laughs> simply because I might not have to. It's really cheap. I already have it open. Right, right, sorry. The other reason why I'm doing this is, yes, with the cheap tool kit, um, I got everything that I need, the Torx, to get off the two screws on the side here and pull it out. And of course, the screws on the rotor and on the cap. Just wanted to let you, oops. Uh, I used a deep socket 13 millimeter to get the uh, screw going in this way to take off the front, you know, the glove compartment and everything, and also down here. And then this is what you end up getting. Urgh! Okay, and then the two screws on the back of the doghouse. Okay, I put the doghouse outside. Uh, that's going to be a 15. Now, the one thing that you should see that I am using that doesn't come with the uh, cheap kit are my extension rods. So, yeah, you know, you can do without it. Actually, it comes with one extension rod, so it might kind of help, but... Anyway, you could do it without the extension rod. I obviously grabbed it because it reduces time big, big, big time. Um, if, per se, I do not change my sparks and wire, I'm just going to verbally walk you through it. Pretty simple, as you see. The wires are just nicely connected, and they go down, and there you go. There's really not much just changing your spark plug and wire. Just make sure you don't cross the wires, and I already explained to you on this vehicle how to do it. And on any other vehicle, we'll do the same thing. Just match up the lengths of the wires, and you can't get it wrong. Be a little bit meticulous with your labeling. Um, you know, take one cable out at the same time, and it doesn't matter if you know what is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, depending on how many cylinders you have, maybe 12. Doesn't matter. Just use masking tape, label it on both ends as your spark plug, and label it as, um, you know, driver one, two, three, four, whatever it is, in whatever order, whatever sequence you can remember, and wherever one is, one being closest to the front of the vehicle or closest to where you're working. Just label it out, and you're not going to get it wrong. And it's really simple to do. Uh, again, the quick recap is, if you are going to do it, I highly recommend using some anti-seize on the thread compound of the spark plug. So, on here, that goes into your block, alright? And then, on this side, usually on the boot, okay, you want to put some dielectric uh, grease. And as I mentioned, they usually come... Uh, they usually come with something. Yeah, here you go. It usually comes with a pack. But uh, I usually buy something that might be better. Or I kind of overdo it. But the, the main reason why you want to do that is so that if you want to just change the spark plugs, when you pull on the boot, never pull on the cable for the obvious reason. Otherwise, you're going to change the whole wire. Or if you're good at repairing, you can repair it. But... Honestly, I never repair spark plug wires unless I'm out on the field and having a problem. Just change the whole wire. It's not worth it. Uh, make sure you pull on here. And if it's not coming off, that's that's why you just do a little wiggle and pull. And the reason why is, well, you can see it right here. Uh, pardon the lighting. There you go. Because this is on the spark rod. I guess that's what we'll call it. And so you just twist and pull. So that's why you want to put on that little dialect grease there to help with um, continuity. Moisture doesn't get in there and screw up and fall up the uh, arc that's going to go. But 
so that it provides a little bit of lubrication so when you pull this off it's much more easier and that you don't wreck the boot and then you can quickly change those cheap spark plugs and be happy all right so that might be it for this video because i may not change the spark plug and uh, the spark wires i might just do the disappearing cap because it's very obvious that it's terrible so i'm going to change that and go for a quick spin with the doghouse off and if it's good I'm going to leave it be and save myself time so I can take Madeline, who's starting to complain, to the park because the sun came out. Uh, today was supposed to be a rainy day. That's why I was going to do this. Yes, I do not mind working on the vehicle when it's raining. Doghouse on this guy. Uh, you're probably going to run into some problems with the chair. Make sure you push it all the way back. Minor electric, so push it all the way back. And, uh, gosh, i got to remember. Um, pull it out. Uh, you can swivel it this way and then up and, and out. Uh, it's a little bit of trickery. You're, if it's your first time, you're going to find out, you're going to cuss and swear at it a little bit, but trust me, once you do it a few times, you'll get used to it, and of course your hope is you're never going to have to take off the house again, but you're going to have to. Uh, while I'm doing this, so the coil, uh, this, here, right here, coil, okay? Um, if you're having a lot of weird issues, uh, other than your starter, okay? Starting up your vehicle, if you're having weird issues on this motor, or especially when it is raining, which is going to happen soon now. And if you can't really start up your vehicle, change that coil. It's going to be a coil issue. Uh, crap, where's the secondary coil? kind of forgot. Uh, let me go back here. Where's this guy? Uh, it's going to be inside here. So it's, it's hard to show if I don't take that one apart. So I won't, I won't talk too much about that. It's going to be a bad video. Okay. Um... Any questions? Ask below. Thanks. Bye.